Hey guys, today I have the brand new Glide Arm 2 in the box right here. Let's open it up. Alright, so for the camera today, we have the Canon 5D Mark IV. And the lens is also from Canon. And it is the 24 to 70 mm f2.82. Just letting you guys know, so you guys know the relative size of the Glide Arm. And let's go back to our main subject. So this is the Glide Arm. The first impression that I got from it was boldness. Everything looks sturdy and stable. The frames are made of hard anodized aluminum. The timing belts inside right here is industrial standard. And the bearings are grade A made in Japan. And of course, all of the pieces are put together by hand. So on top here, there are the ring hand dial right here and then the fixed knob, and then the hand handle. The fixed knob holds the holds or releases the glide arm from position, and everything is processed well. As you can see here on top, the screws are perfectly in place, and the finishes are clean overall. And on the side, if we turn this around, so there are the tensioners over here, and then the friction knob on the side. And as the name, you can tell from the name, the tensioner increases the tension and the friction knob increases the friction of the sliding motion. Both of these can increase the stability when using heavier cameras. So let's put it together. The tripod that we have today is the Gitzo. And so to put the glide arm together, you would loosen the center column first, and then position the glide arm. So instead of turning the glide arm like that, you would turn the center column like that. And if it's in place like that, you, uh, hold, you tighten the center column and give the glide arm a final twist to make sure that it's stable. And next is the ball head. And before that, actually, you want to point the glide arm to one of the legs of the tripod because it increases the stability. And for the ball head now, you just simply twist it on and also give this a twist. And let's put the camera together. So how you assemble this, so instead of turning the camera, like I said about the glide arm, you would re release the ball head and align the camera with the ball head and twist this on, like that, and then lock it and give it a twist to make sure that it's in position, and when you're focusing or finding your uh, object, Look, look through your viewfinder and then tighten the ball head. So there it is, everything is secure. And if you look from the side, so how to use this glide arm? You would pull the fixed knob up and then twist it 90 degrees and then it's free. So from there, and and then I'm just going to turn this to your position so you can see better. Oops. There we go. And once again, so this is the linear motion right now. And, and you can change from the linear motion to follow motion by simply using the ring hand. So the directions are on top of the glide arm to which direction you have to use, turn the ring hand dial. So for now, you would turn this. And it doesn't, the glide arm doesn't have to be held in position while you're switching between the linear and the follow motion. And 
Just to make sure that it's completely in position, you want to make sure that the bottom screw is completely attached to the bottom of the glide arm. And that's just the tip. So from there, before, if the camera was just pointing straight towards in just, just linearly, the camera is now to pointing towards a, a certain object. So it's going like that. So that's, um, that's about the basics of the glide arm too. And you can also switch the angles of the camera like that. So depending on what, you're, what you want to film, if you want, if you want it to zoom in on the object, you would go like that. But this is in fall mode. So and to go back to the linear motion, you would go the opposite way. And sometimes the ring hand dial gets stuck. But, uh, so what the inventor told me was that he could resolve the problem of, be, of the ring hand dial being stuck, but that would complicate the design. And he just wanted to make, keep this glide arm simple in design and the cost would also increase. So he just left a tip for the users so what you would do is, here, let me show you real quick. So if it gets stuck in the middle of going up, you would tighten it, tighten the ring hand dial a little more, and then hold the camera and the ball head and then give a slight twist. And that should free the ring hand dial. So there it is. So that's the glide arm. And to disassemble everything, you just do the opposite of what you did. So give the camera a slight twist and then release the ball head and then there you go so don't like twist the camera that just looks like an amateur so you press that down and then tighten the ball head there we go and also the same for the glide arm so give it a slight twist and and turn the center call. There we go. So everything is this simple and that is the glide arm too. Hey guys, so I'm out here trying to get some footage. So what I'm trying right now is to get the sunlight that's coming through the leaves and I'm trying to get the mid-April feel right now and I'm going to try with the Glide Arm 2. Let's try it out. So I'm looking at right there the tree and the leaves and the light that's coming through it. So the tree right next to me is in the view and this is going to give me that dramatic feel. So. Let's get started. Pull up the fixed knob and twist. So from here, as I go forward, you'll, you'll feel the movement that the glide arm provides. And with the sunlight that's coming through the leaves, you can get that mid-April feel right there. All right. Let's switch to the follow shots. Here we go. Simply by turning the ring hand dial, we can go from linear to follow motion. All right, let's try it out. 